You know, I'm a, an engineer, I'm a father, I'm a veteran. Uh, I'm active in my church and in politics. I'm a wife, and I'm a mother of four. I am a mother to two boys. I'm a working slash stay-at-home mom. Um, I'm a sister. I have three siblings. I guess one of them we're here to talk about today. That would be my brother. Uh, Charles, uh, as I mentioned, was born in Walter Reed and uh, has always been uh, a boy's boy and a man's man. He uh, enjoyed uh, doing manly things when he was growing up. He's um, in the Vermont National Guard. He's been to Iraq. Kind of a troublemaker and kind of a goody two-shoes rolled into one. The attacks on 9-11 happened and uh, in a mixture of uh, patriotism and um, need for college money assistance. He enlisted in the Guard. Our dad was in the Army. He was in the regular Army. And I think the whole time Charles was growing up, there was kind of an expectation that he would follow in those footsteps. His mother uh, mostly coped with it by not thinking about it. Ignorance is definitely bliss. I fell somewhere in between. I mean, I refused to be, you know, to keep myself intentionally in the dark. Um, for 14 months about what was going on um, with him or, or in Iraq in general. I tried very hard not to know too much about it um, because I wanted to almost stay sane. Um, I had a little more trouble with it I think because uh, being a soldier myself I knew what he was going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, even without the, uh, the stories that he told me. It affected my husband the most. He knew too much. He was aware of way too much. He, um, because of the people he knows and the circles he's in from West Point, he was much more aware of things than your average person. You know, he would call us on the phone, and every once in a while we'd, we'd hear the mortar rounds in the background, and he'd say, well, I've got to go. They'd have to go head out to the slip trances, or you know, he'd, sit, he'd hear mortar rounds, he'd say, no, nah, that's over on the other side of the base, we'll be okay here. They saw a lot of action. I remember, I don't think he was in Ramadi, but a couple weeks um, before they had their first uh, firefight, and um, he ended up shooting and killing someone. I think that was hard for him. I think it would be hard for anybody. And that evening, he went on a first patrol um, before sunset. And as they were driving down the street, a guy popped out of the door, pointed an AK-47 right at Charles and shot. And missed. And Charles fired back and didn't miss. I know that a generation ago, people were able to spend an entire career in the military and never be put in that position. And then... Um, it's hard to think of your little brother, and he's, oh God, I don't know how old he was, 21, 22, and, you know, he took somebody's life, and I'm sure that it was a completely justified thing to happen, but it affected him um, without a doubt, and I think it affected the rest of us if we think about it, too, you know. Uh, I had trouble sleeping. I ended up having to take sleep medications. By the same token, he tried to protect everybody at home, and so he held it all in. Because he didn't want to put the burden on anybody else. And as a result, he carried a very heavy, heavy burden himself. Also, Charlie would talk to him in ways he would not talk to the rest of us. I had a uh, spontaneous intestinal bleed out and I almost died. Lost 60% uh, of my blood and uh, had to rush to the hospital and be given transfusions. And then uh, I also experienced a, a cardiomyopathy, which is uh, 
problem with the heart muscle being weakened. It's like, while he was gone, it was um, a revered topic. I mean, if someone mentioned his name, silence fell. It was like, it was kind of weird, you know? It's not like he wasn't dead, you know? Like sometimes when people are, you know, after people pass. But it was almost like there was this waiting time just to see that, you know, he wasn't quite here with us, even though he wasn't gone, you know? It was just, it was kind of generally accepted that this was not a topic to be brought up, you know? We were protecting the ladies. Everybody tried to go with the flow of Charlie. He was restless somewhat, but I think just the overwhelming joy of having him back and in one piece was the overwhelming feeling of the family. When he came back, the fact that he was back, um, more or less whole and in one piece, was enough for her that uh, she was able to, to let it go. You know, he didn't have any parades or anything. He um, he didn't want that. He's always been, like I said, kind of the strong, silent type. He's been very private about whatever he went through. Um, so he came home, and he was glad to be home, and I think he took off his uniform, and uh, he just kind of wanted to put it all behind him. But, um, you know, clearly that's not entirely possible. I do fine, unless I think about him going again. Then I lose it. So I try real hard not to think about it. Um, but that's, I think, what people have is this vision of soldiers going away and the family sacrificing. But those moments and those parades and that euphoric joy of them returning, you know, it's kind of just a snapshot that you see and think. And at least in our experience, it it just kind of it's like, you know, it's fading away from that snapshot. And it, and it does. It It's funny that I can't think of more to say because it affects everything you know every little bit of your life and there's things that you don't want to touch or you don't want to talk about because you don't want to affect a possibility of the great cosmic karma so you know that uh, our young men that are coming back now are either going to uh, bear this burden for many years to come uh, people uh, who are civilians I think recognize that soldiers who are killed in battle or lose a limb uh, have sacrificed. And what they don't realize sometimes is that anyone who's been in battle is sacrificed. Mm -hmm.